I'm here with Brooke Slick. She got diagnosed with MS in her 30s and is now in her 50s and has learned a whole bunch of stuff along the way. And we're going to talk about what all that means right now. I mean, you're out here in the chronic disability space, like you're an HSCT advocate, like you're working on your own mobility device, you work with the MS gym, like you are an MS advocate to the fullest, and you've gotten, um, what, 20, 30 years in the game um, as far as being diagnosed and having the drugs at a different point. You learn through the years that you are in control of what you do in response to the MS that you cannot control. Woo, that was just something that just, it gave me chills, like to talk to me about that. 100%, 100%. That's the thing, you're, you're never, and just from my own observation, I think a lot of people, maybe, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, that a lot of people who have MS, our type A personalities. We're all a bunch of control freaks. <clears throat> you know, we, we like everything just so. And um, so MS is something you cannot control. No way, no how. Yes, you can take drugs, but you it's unpredictable. It's a, you can try to control it, but it's it's still gonna be unpredictable. <clears throat> but what you so you can't control you can't control the MS, but you can control how you react, how you respond, how you and as we said earlier, it's it's like if you've ever taken a long road trip with a family member or a friend that you don't get along with or you don't like that well, it's gonna be a 10 hour drive, you know? You either embrace your differences and make the best of the ride, or you're going to have one hell of a long, miserable ride. So you don't have to be BFFs. You know, you don't have to love your MS. You don't have to love whatever chronic illness, but you got to get along. Can, can you at least get along? Mm, mm. You know, that, have that's... a little respect for each other. You, you have to respect it to a certain degree. You cannot just hate on your MS mm. from day one. You might it, hate that you got it, but I, I personally think looking at the disease with any kind of hatred or mm. horrible disdain kind of fuels the MS ha. and symptomatically. I really, mm. I, I believe that there is a connection in that. Mm. And, mm. and uh, yeah. So having been diagnosed at um, different times, like essentially, I know you're out here, you're on interwebs, you're helping support people, you see newly diagnosed people. And it's like, yeah, man, you know, it stinks you got this diagnosis, you know, but you got the community here and it's great and it's wonderful. Also, the drugs these days, the, the disease modifying therapy these days are so much better than, you know, the one, two, three, yeah. four, 17 that I went through in my, you know, yes. 30 years ago and the steroids and the, like, talk about that. Like you've seen all of that. Well, well, you know, a perfect example would be, you know, back then I had Avonex, or no, I had beta seron, I had Capaxone, I was on the Galenia trial. Um, and then I went to Tysabri because Ty Sabri was newer then. Now Ty Sabri is kind of like, I mean, it's still one of the more powerful drugs, but a lot of people are going to Ocrevus. Um, If I were diagnosed today, I might try Ocrevus and then go straight to HSCT. I had to have like five different other things before I had HSCT. Mm. And copious amounts of steroids along the way. Thank you for different times of having optic neuritis. Mm. Um, and everything along the way. Um, so you're, you're lucky. <laughs> I know I'm lucky to have MS. Now you're lucky to have MS at this time in history. And I foresee that only getting better from this point forward. Mm -hmm. um, there, there, there will be one option or just a handful of options. Mm -hmm. Not all of these peripheral drugs that just kind of 
slow the disease only a certain percentage. Mm. It, it, it's almost like, a, oh, this will shut them up drug. <laughs> shut them, meaning the patient. You know, this will right. we'll just keep dragging it on a little longer. Um, now I would go straight to the big guns. So mm. you're very lucky in that way. Mm. And I think it's important because as we were discussing earlier, I do, I get the privilege of being part of people's lives who are newly diagnosed or have only been diagnosed not that long. And I think to myself, you don't even know what you're up against. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just, I feel bad because I know what's coming for these people. I know what's coming and I just want to jump in every post Every sorrowful post, I want to say it's going to be okay. That does not mean you're going to be okay. You're going to be all fixed. Everything's going to be all better, even though it could it could be. That's yeah. the way MS works. You just don't know. But it and it might. It, it's going to take you out a couple of times. It's going to knock you back a couple of times. But you're still you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So don't let the panic and fear get in the way of thriving. There are still completely different opportunities to thrive despite having MS or any chronic illness. Opportunities that never would have existed had you not been exposed to this disease. Never would have happened in a million years. I mean, you know, I, would, I would be have, sitting here talking to you right now, I'll tell you that. Yes. Exactly. Who would we all be without Damian Washington? Come on. <laughs> Who would I be without Brooktown Slick? Believe that. I mean, you have, you just, you really, you can be as mad as you want. You can be as angry as hell at the disease. It's not going to serve you. Not if, not if you sustain that feeling towards what happened, what's happened to you. Not if you're constantly concentrated on, on, but I had this life planned and I wanted everything to be like this. Forget it. You're going to have to do it in a different way. Mm. You might be able to do the exact same thing, but you're going to have to do it differently. Mm. That's all. That's all. I can still do a ton of stuff, but I have to do it differently. I have to do it more slowly. I have to plan things out. I have to conserve my energy reserve, yeah. but I still get it done yeah. my way. Yeah, my you, way. You learn how to adjust, and the yes. there's 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 always the the notion of man. If I knew what I if I wish I knew then what I know now, and uh, I'm telling you. <laughs> there, there's a lot of juice in that fruit because it, the experience experience is the best teacher and, it, and when i say experience is the best teacher experience is your best teacher because it, it's this is none of this is easy or simple or fun like this, this is a serious medical condition and it hurts yeah and it hurts in a myriad of ways so there's no sort of rosiness about this but your yeah. time, your time still trying to find yourself in the midst of it, through it, um, and maybe even finding things that you either didn't know you had or things that you knew you had, but you weren't re actually going to do if you were feeling good. Um, but the, 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 the weight of the disease makes you makes you have to do something. It makes you want to start the blog or yeah. be reaching out to people on the thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a catalyst, you know? And it gives you uh, what's happened because I had to quit working ultimately, um, which I was a workaholic and so many people who have MS, you know, they were workaholic too. Mm. Um, I, I had to find another way to feel like I was contributing to my household, to my finances, to my, just to, to life in general, contributing to the planet. But the, and the cool thing was having to quit work gave me time and time. Oh my God. Time is a gift. Mm. Time is a gift because it gives you an opportunity to dream. 
Because when you're working nine to five and you're all up in it with your kids and schedules and ballet class and soccer practice, and you don't have time for your grown up dreams. Unfortunately, MS and or chronic illnesses, um, they force you to stop. You have to, whether you wanted to stop or not. But in that space, it allows space to dream again. You know, what if, you know, I always wanted to do X, Y, Z, and I never had the time. Well, guess what? Now you got some time. Um, and like I said before, you might not be able to physically do whatever that was in the same way. You're going to have to do it your way. You're going to have to do it differently. You might have to do it slow, more slowly, but it can still be done. The dream is still there. It can still be realized. You can still thrive. You can still thrive with this. It might be in a completely different way than you ever even imagined. You know, not something was ever on your radar. Did I think I was going to be hosting a podcast? No, no, I did not. But it came to me because I was living in the MS space. So opportunities abound, believe it or not. Um, it's not it's not all gloom and doom. It's just not. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's um it's all it's a lot, but it's not all. Yeah. And it, it's you have to keep your uh, another ideal, another idea of yourself, of what you want to do, of wh wh what you want to be, and who you are, and what everyone has to deal with something, friend. Yeah. Everyone has to deal with something, and that is not to say, yes. oh, you. Um, can take a look at someone else and they have it worse than you and you should feel, but nah, the fact yeah. is everyone has to deal with something. This is your thing. So how are you going to deal with it? Um, yeah. and, and that, that's really what um, and, and having a disease like this does. And like, like you said, like if I wasn't, if I was not on bed rest from that spinal tap that did not heal, uh, for weeks, yes. I would not be here talking to you right now uh, because I would not have started my vlog that like yeah. I would not I had in my brain to not quit no matter who was was or was not watching and about 35 weeks into it is was when multiple sclerosis stuff started to take off and started to move so it had, if I had not had that mandatory pause to just think yes. to just think and um yes i would not be here with you right now so yes it's it's yeah. um just your point about how a lot of times when the, the disease makes you stop but yep. if you can find some grace while you are in that stop when you are in going uh, forward with motion again, you can do some really special things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Things that you never even imagined you could do. The dreams mm. can get even bigger than mm. any dream that you ever had before because you have the opportunity and the time to make it happen. Yeah. It's, it's to allow the, a bigger dream. It's the time thing. Um, there's a, a quote that's attributed to the Buddha and it says, the trouble is you think you have time and huh. something like a, a serious condition helps you remember that, yeah, you got time, but you don't really got some time like that, my guy. Right. If, if you're going to do something, you might as well hurry right. up and do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like use it well. This is your opportunity to use it well. No, for no real talk, because I'm for me, I'm I'm glad that you were able to give some time into this space right here, right now, because a lot more people are newly diagnosed. A lot more people have been lugging the ball and chain for 25, 30, 35, 40 years and, and have that all. Um, there's a mindset and, and a head that's involved with all of that. And yeah, it, it's it, to talk about MS is one thing. To talk about race and MS is another. To talk about gender and MS is another thing. But to be able to be like, hey, this is my life and this is my time and uh, my lifetime 
and my experience with MS is different at one point in my lifetime than it is at another point in my lifetime. You dig? Yeah. Yeah. So now I, I just want to be like, thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Um, for, for Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Whoever thought you know, <laughs> having an older perspective, even though I'm sorry, but I don't consider 56 older, Damien, but okay. I mean, listen, I don't think it's all eight, but I just, when my boss tells me what we're going to talk about, then I'm like, okay, this is what we're going to talk about. <laughs> but no, no, no that, I'm happy. I'm happy to contribute. No, it's so really like, thank you, bro. And thank you for coming through and giving us some of your light and your energy. And thank you guys for tuning in. And we'll see you on another MS Views now. Ooh, that's my timer. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>